good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today we're going to be talking about what the hell happened on monday night raw last night guys it seemed like i don't know what was in the air i don't know what it was but it just seemed like monday night raw had like a breath of fresh air i don't know if it was the big dog returning to the house which is what we're going to discuss here today or was it just overall i don't know it was just something about the show felt a little bit different um by in, by no means was it an amazing show i mean i you know monday night raw has been in just de devastation for the longest time, guys. Just months and months and months of just being absolutely awful, repetitive, boring, formulaic garbage. And I don't know, something about last night just gave it a fresh feel. It just felt more exciting. I don't know if it's because we're on the road to WrestleMania or, or Roman Reigns being back in the house or... Just all the combination of the stuff. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. The main two things that happened. I mean, we had some crazy stuff happen. We had Ronda Rousey laying down the Raw Women's Championship saying, if you don't reinstate Becky Lynch, I'm out this hoe. Um, we had, you know, uh, Ric Flair's freaking epic AF birthday party bash. We had Roman Reigns addressing his leukemia, which was just amazing, incredible stuff. But anyway, let's just get into it. We're going to start off, I guess we can start off with the start of the show, and then we'll get to the end of the show. So start the show, we had the big dog coming back. You know, we did a full video on this on, you know, we they did the announcement on Twitter, on social media, on Instagram. It was blown up. You know, Roman Reigns will be on Monday Night Raw. They wanted to, they didn't want to surprise him. They wanted to, you know, put it out there and make sure people tuned in to see what he had to say. I thought it was excellent, to be honest with you you guys. I thought they, they they pretty much did this perfectly. They did not have Roman Reigns come out until the very end of the segment. They had Joe Anoe or Anawai, however you want to say it. He came out to the ring, guys, and it was awesome. I loved, you know, it was just, I got chill bumps all over my body, and you know, he, he thanked God, and he addressed, he had just addressed the whole situation, and he thanked the fans, and it was just so genuine and, and so heartfelt. It was an amazing moment. I, I you know, I, I genuinely prayed for this man every single day, and I knew that he would be healed. I knew that everything would be taken care of, and I, I, I knew it in my in my spirit, in my heart. I knew that he would be fine, and here he is, and he announced that he, he, he is in remission, which means that he is currently cancer-free right Right now and that it is amazing guys it's it's truly amazing what god can do and i know that you know the doctors and his treatment did fantastic and it was just it was just really good guys it, it was amazing I, I was truly touched by it i thought he did a fantastic job addressing everything and it, and it just made me so freaking hyped i was so super duper excited for him and for everybody involved it was just so i thought they booked that perfectly and i know it really wasn't booked that way they just said go out there and do this but he came out there guys and the big dog is back and it's just so amazing guys i, I am so excited just to see what he does here and i thought it was just beautifully done so i just wanted to give a huge uh tip of the cap to wwe and everybody involved in that and roman reigns and joe anna white himself and his family i'm just uh it's just an awesome situation so i just want to hats off to the big dog and everybody involved in that and it's just good stuff, guys. But anyways, he addressed it, and he was announcing that he is back. And I'm super freaking happy for that, as I've addressed here. But anyways, later on in the night, we had Dean Ambrose taking on Drew McIntyre. It was a no-DQ match between Dean Ambrose and Drew McIntyre, obviously. Elias comes down to the ring. You know, they, they all attack Ambrose, and so... After Drew McIntyre picks up the win, Trash Corbin and Bobby Trashley, that should be that should be a tag team right there. Bobby Trashley and Trash Corbin teaming together, that'd be really good. Anyways, guys, they come down and they're about to four on one assault this man. And out of nowhere, Seth Rollins' music hits. He comes out with a chair. So my boy Seth Rollins comes out. Then Roman Reigns' music hits. They all come down. The shield is here. They all come down. They hit the spear. Or no, they hit the Superman punch on Lashley and a spear on Drew McIntyre. And uh, they stand tall there at the end of that segment. So is this a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion? Is the S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back together? I'm sort of worried about this because I remember in my Roman Reigns video that I did literally just a couple days ago, we discussed this, how I did not want Roman Reigns to come back if it was just going to be some six-man tag effort. And obviously, Seth Rollins is booked for WrestleMania. He is going to be booked. But I could see maybe a tag team match at Fastlane for Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose if they are, in fact, together. But I have so many questions about this. Why is Roman Reigns helping out Dean Ambrose after Dean Ambrose totally turned on Seth Rollins on the night of his announcement, his initial announcement in October, when uh, Roman Reigns announced he was going away for a while to fight leukemia, why would he want to? Why would him and Seth Rollins want to come back and help Dean Ambrose? I don't know. That just doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure in the next few weeks we're going to learn. You know, uh, maybe they'll I don't know patch up the holes here, but I don't really like that. How you know if this man turned on you and did all these things, why in the hell? 
would you want to, you know, I, I don't know. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, it, the shield is obviously reforming, and I don't really like that either. You know, th this is many attempts. They have tried this two, three, four times now since the shield originally disbanded. They have tried to bring them back together, and it's always been awful. It's always been, you know, broken up by injury. It's always been broken up by illness. It's always just been just lackluster, to say the least. So... I don't know. It just hasn't worked for me, so I don't know what they're going to do here. But I do think that uh, if they do do this S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion thing, that Seth freaking Rollins is going to have the help of Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania, and he's going to slay the beast, and that's going to be it. And I don't know where they go from there, obviously, because if Seth Rollins is Universal Champion, I guess Roman and Dean, I don't know what their roles are going to be until they implode again. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting moving forward, but I, I don't know. The big dog's back, which I'm happy for, but uh, this S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, I guess we're going to have to see. But the end of the show... Of course, one of the storylines was Ric Flair's 70th birthday bash. We had Sting, we had HBK, we had Legends, Ricky Steamboat, we had freaking Kurt Angle in the house. Obviously, he's always on Monday Night Raw, though. I mean, we literally saw him wrestle Jinder Mahal on this night. But uh, we had all these legends in the ring, guys. We, we were having this celebration for Ric Flair, Triple H, and Stephanie. They get this freaking commemorative World Heavyweight Championship. It felt so good to see that belt on television, by the way. They do all this stuff for him. They got all the birthday party and the cake and everything set up in the ring, and they're like, well, let's just bring Ric Flair on out. And we go backstage, and lo and behold, you know, he, he wasn't coming out. His music hit, and nothing's happening. Everybody's like, where the hell's Ric Flair at? Well, come to find out, Brad, we go backstage, and Dave mother frickin' Batista, the animal Batista, is here, and he has assaulted Ric Flair on his 70th birthday bash, kicking the hell out of him. He drags him out of the locker room, drags his lifeless corpse out of the locker room, and he looks at the camera, and he says... What's up, Hunter? Do I have your attention now? And he yells, and it's just freaking beautiful, man. I was getting chills all over my body. I thought it was excellent. I freaking thought this was beautiful. First of all, I love Batista. He's one of my favorites of all time. Second of all, I love the heel Batista right here. And, of course, Triple H is in the ring, and he's panicking. He gets out of the ring. He runs up the ramp. He runs backstage, and they're checking on Ric Flair. And I love this, guys. We are going to be getting Batista, Dave Batista, returning. And we're going to get Triple H going one-on-one -on -one with Batista at WrestleMania 35. It's the only thing that makes sense. You know, we were all worried. Uh, well, first of all, we all knew it's SmackDown 1000. They were clearly planting seeds between them um, with their promos, with Dave Batista's promos and Triple H going back and forth with Evolution on that night. Beautiful stuff on SmackDown 1000 between that, planting those seeds there. And then, of course, Triple H got hurt at Crown Jewel, I do believe, in that tag team match with the Brothers of Destruction when he was DX, you know, with Shawn Michaels and all that good jazz. So we had that, and everybody was worried, or oh, we're not going to get the match. It really hadn't been mentioned again, and everybody was worried that, you know, he his pectoral injury is going to hold him out for months. There's no way that he's going to make it back in time. He gets healed up, but still... It was in the back of people's minds, but it wasn't on the forefront like it had been. You know, people have kind of just thought, uh, you know, sort of forgotten about it. Sort of about Daniel Bryan and The Miz. You remember when that was a big thing? Everybody was like, yeah, this is exactly how it's going to go. Who the hell's talking about The Miz now? The Miz is mixed up in something else. So th it was one of those things, but Dave Batista comes out of nowhere, and we're getting the match, man, and I'm super duper freaking hyped for it. I mean, this, this Monday Night Raw... I thought that, you know, I know Aleister Black and Ricochet, they were in a tag team match against the tag team t champion Revival, and people were, you know, uh, talking about how they don't like them in tag team matches, which is which is true. They shouldn't be in tag team matches, especially together when they're not really a tag team, going up against other tag teams. And also, they picked up a victory over the Revival, the Raw tag team champions, making them look like trash for two weeks in a row. But I loved their match. I thought their match was great. Uh, it was high-paced. It was exciting action. It was high-flying. It was, you know, energetic. It had a freaking passion behind it. I don't know if it was because it was the four men in the ring. I'm sure it was because those men care about what they're doing. And it wasn't formulaic. It was nice. And, and we had Batista on this show. And we had all these legends. And we had, you know, this, this Roman Reigns coming back. And we had the man. And we had Dean Mean Machine. And it, I don't know. I could be insane, but it felt like it. Of course, you had your negatives. You had your Ronda Rousey tag team match against the Riot Squad with Natalya, which I guess makes sense with the Becky Lynch segment. But I don't know. I thought Becky kind of looked weak in that. I thought that, you know, it kind of looked uh, sort of all over the place, in my opinion, in that segment. Um, I thought that Becky looked badass, but at the same time, it was like, I don't know. It was just sort of weak. I don't know what it was. And then, um, I don't know, I didn't I didn't like the tag match. I, the women's tag team wrestling without the tag titles is just, I don't know. You got, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm just sick of seeing Riot Squad every single week. But then we had Trashley taking on Braun Strowman, which is just awful television. Nobody should see that. They, they should just, I, I don't know, man, get rid of that S. But 
I want to know your guys' thoughts down below on what you thought of Batista returning. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was beautifully booked and in great imagery and everything. The big dog is back. You guys heard me at the beginning of the video. I talked about this. So freaking thankful, and it's just amazing to see Roman Reigns back, and I can't wait to see him get back in the ring. It's just so freaking cool to see, and it's a good time, man. WrestleMania season is here, and we're ready to go, but that pretty much does it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. I would love to know your thoughts on what you thought about the big dog returning, what you thought about freaking Dave Batista returning, what you thought about Ric Flair's ruined birthday party, and uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so very much for watching. We got some epic hauls and some great stuff coming this week. MDT Battle Royal coming very soon. Vindication Episode 12 coming soon. It's 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 great stuff, man. We're, we're, we're forging on and it's going to be good stuff. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.